Welcome to the Mustard Seed Media video podcast. My name is Bob, and this is the podcast for Drupal web designers. This week, across the internet, we had a debate about what the topic for the video podcast would be. Views, arguments, won out. If you would like a voice in what we do on this podcast, follow us on Twitter or become a fan of our Facebook page, and you can tell us what you want to hear about. Uh, go to mustardseedmedia.com, and in the top right corner, you can click one of those icons and join the party. So, views, arguments is what we're talking about this week. Uh, we mentioned views, arguments in a podcast two weeks ago, the Node References podcast. I sort of mentioned it in passing as I was doing something, and a lot of people said, hey, can you cover that more? Can you show me more about what views, arguments do? And I will. So let's uh, let's let's define a views, argument first, or even an argument in general. Uh, in the in the Node References podcast, I define an argument as sort of a dynamic filter, a filter that uh, you put in views that is going to depend on something else. So the filter might be one thing in one place and another thing in another place. It's going to make more sense when we look at it. But if you just think of it, uh, when we look at views filters as another filter, or I'm sorry, views arguments as another filter in your view, that's going to help you go a long way. Now, arguments are a thing outside of views for uh, for everyone like me who's not really a programmer, doesn't really understand the depths of coding, arguments are used in languages to pass information uh, into uh, functions, maybe? I don't know. I'm not a developer. I don't know the terminology. But you're passing more information into code uh, so that the code will behave differently. So that's what we're going to show today. I'll stop blabbing and get right into views arguments. Here we go. Views, obviously, if you don't know anything about views, you absolutely should. So go to drupal.org slash project slash views and download it. Arguments are a core part of views. Um, episode 9 of the Mustard Seed Media video podcast uh, dealt with views too, and I haven't gone back to watch it, so I don't know if it's any good. Uh, it, it's, cha it's actually changed a decent amount since then, but it'll give you a general overview. So we're going to use views today. When I look at my site that we're going to work on, we basically have the core, the two core content types, article and page. No big surprise here. We're going to use these. There is one thing I want to show you that I've added uh, to the page content type. I've added a node reference field. We're going to use this uh, in a little while as we use arguments. But this node reference field, uh, if you know anything about configuring these, is basically a field that says this page is related to an article. Uh, so the article is the other content type. So what we're able to do is relate pages to articles, and that's going to be important when we look uh, a little bit later. So if you look at some just dummy generated content, Devel module generated for me, uh, you'll see that we have some articles, uh, and uh, then we have some pages. And the pages have this node reference field. So this node reference, this is saying that this page is related to this article. So if I click on it, you'll see that this is an article that it's related to. And we'll look more at that in a minute. But let's go ahead and build our view. So I'm just going to create a new view. And it's just going to be uh, argument view, just a sample view that I'm going to create. Obviously, you want to name it something more creative than that. Um, and so the first thing that I'm going to show you with arguments, arguments can serve a bunch of different purposes. I'm going to show you two of the main purposes that it serves. Uh, and there's a zillion different things you can do with arguments, but I'm going to just show you two, and hopefully you can sort of play around from there and extrapolate and figure out what else they can do. So the first thing that I'm going to do, let's let's think about uh, a situation where we have some taxonomy terms. On this site, I also have two taxonomy terms that I neglected to show you. If I go to that page, you can see uh, it's just the topic for an article, and if we lift, list the terms, we have two topics, bacon and cheese. So we have two things that our articles can be about. So one of the things we might want to do is create a page, uh, a view that shows all of our articles, but we only want them to show uh, articles for a particular category. So we could say, oh, well, we would just build two views, right? We would, we would build uh, one view that showed uh, the node type of article. And then we would add another filter for our taxonomy, right? We would say taxonomy term uh, is bacon. And I would update it. And now this page that I'm going to create, if I added a page display, this page would only show articles with the term bacon, right? 
So uh, if we wanted to make another page that only showed articles with the term cheese, we would do another page and we would do another taxonomy term and we would make a second view basically, right? We don't want to do that because what if we have a thousand taxonomy terms? What if we have, um, you know, the, the, the client to our site or our administrators are adding terms every day? We don't want to have to go in and build a thousand views or a thousand, you know, every time we add a new uh, taxonomy term, we add a new view, that kind of stuff. So we're going to use arguments to automatically pass in the term to uh, this view. So instead of doing taxonomy term bacon, I'm going to remove that and I'm going to add an argument instead. And I'm going to say my argument is my taxonomy term. And I'm just going to uh, do, 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 there's a whole bunch of options here. You can do with taxonomy terms. You can transform the case. Um, you can do all kinds of validation. I'm just going to leave it as is. So now I have a taxonomy term argument. So if I set my path to this page and I set it to articles type, now I want this last piece of argument or this last piece of URL to be my argument, my, my taxonomy term. So I want it to be articles slash type slash bacon for all the articles about bacon or articles slash type slash cheese for all the articles about cheese. So what I can do here is I can use this percent symbol as my argument. And what this essentially is doing in my case right now is it's gonna automatically generate two pages. One for bacon, one for cheese. So if I hit update, uh, and let me set this as just so we can get some display stuff. Okay, now if I didn't miss anything, I'm going to save that. And so what this has done is this has just generated a views page for each argument. So if I go to my URL I created, articles slash type slash bacon, this now is giving me all of the articles tagged with bacon. So you can see that one's tagged with bacon. This one's tagged with bacon. It's only showing me articles tagged with bacon. And now if I go to slash cheese, it's only going to give me the articles tagged with cheese. So what we've done is we've used an argument to automatically generate pages, basically. We've passed in an argument as another filter saying, uh, when we go to this URL and we pass the, U or the argument into the URL as part of the structure, uh, create me a page based on that argument. You can see this is wonderful because now I can create a zillion uh, different taxonomy terms. It doesn't matter. This one view is going to power and give me pages for every single uh, taxonomy term that I add because I'm using the argument to dynamically alter the content. So that's page. Now let's say we want to do that uh, with block. Now blocks are a little bit different because blocks by default you can't really pass arguments into. Uh, blocks are uh, a little bit different because they sort of live outside of the context of the page that they're in. So let me give you an example of what I want to do. So let's say on some of these, let me go back uh, to the home page. Let's say on some of these, I have a node reference, right? So this is a page with a node reference to this article. Let's say that I want uh, this article page to show me all of the, all in, in the sidebar in a block, all of the pages that are referenced to it. So it's sort of like related content. I know it's, it sounds a little confusing, but uh, let me show you what I'm going to do. I'll just build it and hopefully that'll make sense then. So I'm going to have a different argument. My argument this time is going to be the node reference field that I added for uh, the content type. If you remember back, I added uh, a node reference field on the page content type to stories. So I'm going to select that node reference as my argument. Now here's a brilliant thing that's new to views that didn't exist before. Because blocks are outside of the page context. It doesn't understand what page it's on. Somehow we have to get that node reference, that node ID into the block so it knows which nodes to show. Uh, so what I can do is I can actually provide a default argument and choose the node ID from the URL. So this is going to look up at the URL of the page that I'm on and say pass that ID into um, my view as the argument. So what it's doing, uh, and this will make more sense once I show you this, I've created this block. I'm going to call it 
referenced pages. And I'm going to put a title as reference pages. I swear this will make sense once, uh, once I built it and you see it. I know it's a little confusing. Uh, and I'm going to create a list. And I'm going to add just a title field. Uh, node title. OK. So now what I'm going to do is, so what's happening is this block is going to display on the sidebar of a page. Then the argument is going to look up into the URL of the page it's on, pass that node ID from the URL into this argument, and then only show me stuff in my view where the node ID in the URL matches the argument uh, that I'm using in my block. So it's only going to show me uh, pages that are referenced to the story I'm looking at. So let me save this. Now I'm going to go into blocks and I'm going to enable this block. Oh, I already have it. So sidebar last is already enabled. So now if I go to any uh, article, well, that one must not have any. Let me go to this article. I, okay, it's not working and I know why it's not working because in my view, I uh, have to change the content type because I want that block to show pages, not articles. So now if I go back and I look at this, now what it's showing me, so here's my block. This is a article that is showing me all of the pages referenced to it. It's going up to look in the URL, which you can't see because this uh, path auto stuff is actually overriding the true node ID, which is up here. Uh, but it's looking up there at the node ID of this node, passing it into the view, and then it's only going to show me pages. So if I look at this page, it will be uh, referenced to this story. You can see that. And if I look at this page, it will be referenced to this story. So I've created a block with an argument where I pass the argument into the block. And so the node ID is determining wit what is showing in this block. Confusing maybe, but best I can do to describe it, you have to play around with it a little bit. Uh, another good thing to look at is the node reference podcast that I did uh, two times ago that will show you another way to do this using views arg or, um, uh, views attach module uh, to pass arguments into it and only show content on a page, re page referenced from that node. Woo! I feel like that was really confusing. I apologize. Ask your questions in the comments. Hopefully it makes sense to somebody out there because arguments aren't very easy to explain. Play with them. Eventually you'll figure them out. Hopefully you have a great week. We'll see you over at mustardseedmedia.com slash podcast with your comments. And uh, there's also a chip in over there if you appreciate the podcast and want to throw a few dollars on it. You can do that and we would appreciate it. That is it for now. Have a good week. Next week, next week we're going to do the exciting new module display suite. So come back for that. See you later.